Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Grace and peace to you on this day, the fifth Sunday of Easter, as we gather uh, together virtually to celebrate this Easter season and join together in praise and worship. Uh, it is a joy to be with you on this day as we continue to uh, uh, travel through this Easter season together on the internet. I don't know about you, but uh, one thing that I found great uh, great joy and, and given thanks for in this time is uh, the way that uh, as time has kind of melted away and what day or week or month it is has become less and less important to me. Sunday morning has continued to be a time uh, that marks the week for me, that, that I kind of find my grounding and what time it is. Uh, based on uh, when Sunday rolls around, which is how uh, how time is designed to be, that this day, the Lord's day, the first day of the week, the day of resurrection, is the day in which all of our time and lives revolves around. What a beautiful gift to be reminded of, even in the midst of these uh, difficult and rocky and changing times. We do have a number of announcements uh, as we gather in worship today. Uh, Josh and Lauren um, Butler are both having birthdays uh, this week, and so we say happy birthday to them and, and uh, celebrate uh, that occasion with them. Uh, we've added two new prayer requests to our list, or, or added one and, and have an update on another. Uh, Larry Thomas has been added to our prayer list. Larry is Joan Thomas's husband, Joan, our, our church office administrator, and, and uh, Larry was uh, taken to the hospital this week with some health complications, and so uh, we're still um, uh, waiting for some answers with all of that, but uh, but uh, holding uh, both Larry and Joan uh, in our prayers on this day and throughout uh, this week. Also, uh, we've been praying for Justin and Ruza Shelloway. Um, Justin is uh, Dwight and Nancy Shelloway's son, and, and uh, they've been expecting a child uh, who has now been born. Um, and so we give great uh, joy uh, uh, and celebration uh, for uh, Christopher John Michael. Uh, who was born earlier this week, and now he uh, and parents are all at home together uh, in um, Nashville. It's possible it's Knoxville, uh, but I'm, I'm very, very mostly pretty sure it's Nashville. So wherever in Tennessee they are, uh, we give great thanks that the family is together there uh, and, and continue to uh, um, offer uh, prayers of thanksgiving for them, but also hold them in our hearts as this uh, season of life with a newborn um, is sure to be a challenging one in all sorts of ways. We also hold in our prayers today uh, uh, mothers and mother figures um, on this Mother's Day. I've always loved celebrating Mother's Day in the church because I've always felt that that in the church community is the place where I most uh, am able to just see the gift of um, of mothers and, and, and people who mother others. And so uh, I love uh, being together on this day where I can, can look at, at all of these amazing women uh, who have been uh, such uh, uh, important mother figures uh, in my life, uh, in the lives of my children, in the life of so many of our youth, uh, and, and to get to be with them and, and say thank you and appreciate them on this day. And so it is hard to be separate on this day. I'm sure it's hard for many uh, to be away from their own mother on this time. I know there are many who have lost their mother in this last year. And so today is a day of joy and thanksgiving and celebrating the gift that, that uh, all of those who mother uh, give to us. It's also a day that is difficult for so many reasons and especially difficult to be apart. And so we hold uh, one another in our hearts uh, even as we give thanks to all of those out there who have uh, mothered us. Um, and there are so many in our congregation who I'm thankful for, for the ways uh, that you have mothered me in just our time together and the way I see you mothering um, my children and, and, and the children and youth of our congregation. Your witness and your work uh, is is beautiful and important, and, and we could never say thank you enough. So uh, I hope you're in your pajamas on this day and you didn't, you know, have to work hard to make everybody uh, uh, get dressed in their best and that you can relax uh, and know um, that you have been a mother uh, to uh, so many and, uh, and we love you. Uh, I also want to let you know that yesterday our church council met uh, and had conversation about what's going to happen the next few weeks. Obviously, more and more things are beginning to reopen. Uh, and we decided that we are going to follow the guidelines of our synod council 
and remain worshiping uh, remotely through the end of May. Um, and then we'll make a decision uh, further than that once that gets closer. But that uh, came after lots of conversation and prayer. Uh, we are anxious to be together in person, uh, physically, but we also are wanting to make sure we're being uh, safe and cautious or make sure that we're creating a space that's safe for all people and not just uh, people um, with really good immune systems. Uh, and we also want to make sure that whenever we do gather, we do it in the ways that are our best and, and we'll have to continue some online things even then. And so finding these balances is going to be uh, tricky. And so trying some kind of outdoor worship uh, would have been a lot of work. It would have taken time to figure it out. And then we have to figure out indoor worship right after that. And it makes more sense to say, you know what, what we're doing here is real and it's working now. And as much as we are anxious to be together, uh, it's better to err on the side of caution and to continue to follow the leadership uh, of our synod uh, and so many others. And so through the end of May, uh, that's the 17th, 24th, 31st on all those Sundays, this is how we'll again be worshiping. But you can expect to hear further updates as the month goes on and we continue to make plans for what re-gathering uh, physically will look like and when that will take place. Uh, it is a joy to be with you in worship on this day. Uh, wherever you are, however you are worshiping today, I hope uh, and I pray that the, the Spirit of God might be so apparent to you that you can't help but realize that you truly are this morning in the midst of God. Because you are. Because Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for the saving waters. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days. Enliven our bones. Dry our tears. Wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is found in Acts chapter 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will all read responsibly from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep my, keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, 
lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who per persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is found in 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by, by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices accept, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ for it stands in scripture see I am laying in Zion a stone a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame to you then who believe he is precious but for those who do not believe the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall they stumble because they disobey the word and as they are destined to do but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to repair a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way, the place that I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may glorify, be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I am the way and the truth and the life, Jesus says. It's our second week in a row with Jesus giving us one of these I am statements. We talked last week about how these are important uh, and they happen throughout John's Gospel because these are where we learn 
who Jesus is, not that Jesus is just a gate or a good shepherd or a way, truth, life, but because we see that Jesus is God made flesh. I am is the name of God. It's the way that God describes God's self when God reveals God's self to the people uh, in Exodus. When God speaks to Moses from the burning bush and Moses says, who are you? God says, I am who I am. And so when Jesus draws on this same I am language, he's making a clear statement, not just about the specific thing he is saying he is in this text, but who he is saying he is. I am. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is God incarnate, God in the flesh, God with us. And today Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's this uh, beautiful and appropriate message for us in these times. He starts by saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Easier said than done, Jesus, thanks a lot. But it is a reminder that even in the midst of troubling times, Jesus, God with us, is here and is reminding us not to be overwhelmed and overcome by the troubles, but rather believe in God, believe in the Christ, Put ourselves and our trust and our faith in this story, in these words. I am the way and the truth and the life, Jesus says. And he says this because Thomas uh, asks this question, right? Where Jesus says, you know where uh, I'm, or you know the way to where I'm going. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How could we know the way? How do we know the way if we don't even know the where? And Jesus points out that Thomas has completely misunderstood the whole thing. I am the way, Jesus says. It's not a question of, of where. The where isn't the most important part. The way to the where is what Jesus says. You know the way to where I am going. When Thomas asks, we don't even know where, Jesus doesn't say, well, it's just over there. Or it's just, you know, heaven. Or it's just, you know, this, this miracle place in the clouds where you're all going to live when you die. Jesus doesn't talk about any of that. He's not concerned with the where. Jesus' point is the way. Thomas says we can't know the way because we don't know the where. And Jesus says the way is the point. I am the way and the truth and the life. In many ways, Jesus is making a very similar point to the one he made last week. Last week, Jesus said, I am the gate. We talked about how it's not Jesus being the gatekeeper, being the one who's deciding who's in and out and, and blocking a path, that it means Jesus is the entry point. Jesus is the opening. Jesus is the path that leads into life eternal, life that is eternally deep eternally long, eternally experienced, eternally rich and full and flavorful. And again here today, we hear Jesus say, I am the way and the truth and the life. It reminds me that in the very beginning of the church, thousands of years ago, uh, before Christianity was a thing, before uh, they had names and labels as such, before even they were calling themselves the church, they called themselves the way. This is our earliest name for, for what we are doing here now. And I love it and it's beautiful uh, in part because it speaks to movement. Jesus doesn't build a building. Jesus doesn't say this. <laughs> of course. Jesus doesn't say this is, is the spot. This is the where. I am uh, the where. I am the place. She says, I am the way. I am the movement. I am the direction. I am the path. The path that leads to and is truth and life. I had to pause for a bit there and wait for the chainsaw to finally stop. And now something else has started. The point is, the church is called to be people of the way, not uh, to be focused on, on buildings, not to be an institution, but to be a movement. 
We are people on the move, people on the way, people of the way, following the path that is Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, journeying together to experience truth and life together and to share it with the world. And it's why the church is not called to be focused on, on endings. We're not focused on arriving someplace or some destination or aware. The way is our call. We're called to walk this way. That we might do things in, in Christ. Right? Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me, the one who walks my way, will do the works that I do. This is our calling. To walk the way, to live the life and the truth. To carry the things that we find in Christ with us as we journey. To offer them to one another as we journey together and to share them with the world. It's why the church is called to be engaged in the world as we move forward along the way, not trying to, to get to some destination, a finish line, but that we might show people, that we might guide the world in the ways of truth and life, just as Christ guides us, leads us on these paths, on this way. You do have to wonder if God's spirit is moving and telling me uh, enough is enough and the sermon should probably be ending by now. So, in conclusion, <laughs> let us remember that we are not called to focus on the where, that we are not called to focus on the destination, on where we might end up, on, on where we're going, on, on what happens after this life, on when, uh, what, where the world will end. We are called to be people of the way journeying together along the way, in the way that is our Christ. And in these times of difficulty, may we all the more hold true to the things that we have experienced in God, to the life that God has given us, to, to the blessings of joy and peace and love and grace and mercy and healing and community and gatheredness and all of these things, this truth, this life that we experience in God's way. Let us carry all of these things along the way to one another, even as we are distanced, to use the means that we have to share this truth and life, this way with one another, and let us share it with a world that is hungry and desperate for good news. Let us walk this way boldly and always speaking words of life that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world that you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O oh God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Especially, we pray for those we name before you now aloud or silently in our hearts or typed into our chats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for safe pregnancies of expectant parents, for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all those who have shown mother and care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of your promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Lord, listen to your children pray. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
and now able to share a word of God's peace uh, with those gathered around you or uh, with anybody you can reach out to at this time. I invite you uh, to share a word of God's peace uh, by leaving a comment here uh, wherever you're watching uh, or send a message uh, through Facebook or, or on your own Facebook page, leave a word of God's peace. Uh, give a call to somebody, uh, write a letter, uh, send out a text or a group text, give a message of God's peace uh, to those uh, who you can reach at this time as we all need reminders of God's peace. Uh, or open your window and, and give a shout uh, out to creation, a word of God's peace, or find a, a flower or a bug or a squirrel uh, that you might be able to bless with the word of God's peace. And then our worship continues with the offering. Oh, and pause if you need to, right? Take all the time you need for God's peace. Let us not rush past uh, uh, sharing and remembering God's peace in these, these days. And so pause as long as you need, and then uh, we'll resume our worship uh, with an offering of... Um, uh, we're still uh, uh, gathering offering electronically, and so if you're able to go to OurFatherGSO.com, you can give there uh, by clicking the big, uh, the word giving at the top and the big green give button. You can give through uh, credit or debit or uh, bank account. Um, you also could pull out your checkbook now and write a check uh, to be sent in. Uh, we're collecting the mail every day and depositing checks once a week. And so uh, I think it's important to keep our generosity rooted in our liturgical movement. And so I invite you, uh, while I share a musical offering, uh, to still uh, make your generous uh, offering um, at this time too, uh, and, and to go to the website or pull out your checkbook and do that now uh, as we continue to have our generosity be rooted in um, um, our worship. Uh, the song we'll sing today is a camp song that we've sung before, um, uh, but I'm going to put a little spin on it to make it fit our, our, our uh, kind of word day a little more. So this song is called Prepare the Way, uh, but we're going to sing uh, We Walk the Way. We Walk the Way of the Lord. So I invite you to sing with me.
walk the way, we walk the way of the Lord. Let us pray. Risen God, on this day of resurrection, we experience eternal life in you. We give thanks for your gift of grace. We celebrate the rising of our Lord. We praise the work of redemption you bring to all the earth. We also grieve that we are still apart and unable to celebrate this day together. Gather us in your love that we may know we are one body in you. And hasten the day when we shall be together again to sing your praises. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at the Lutheran Church of Our Father, it is our mission for all to experience God's grace through faith and love and service. We still have an abundance of ways that we are living that out uh, as we walk this way of Christ. Uh, one of the ways we're doing that is in worship, which we have every Sunday uh, on Facebook or YouTube or our website just like this. Uh, we also uh, have worship on Wednesday nights as a service of lament. It's a, a kind of raw and authentic um, contemplative time where we try to bring our full uh, self and full emotions to worship uh, with God. Those are on Wednesday uh, on Facebook at 6.30 and also on YouTube and on our church website. Uh, we also have um, a Zoom call that we do every week. It'll be Thursday at 6.30. Uh, if you don't have a link for that, please do uh, ask me or send a message uh, on this Facebook page or, or however, uh, and, and let me know that you need the link um, because we'd love to gather together. And that's just a time for us to check in with one another. We tend to share uh, highs and lows and God sightings for the week. We also think about uh, just all this stuff that's going on around us and how it's affecting us and, and how we can be faithful and experience God in it. Uh, and it's a time to just see one another's faces and remember that we are a community together even as we are socially distanced. Uh, during this time, my brother and I are making uh, daily devotionals, uh, two each day, one for uh, more geared at adults and one that's geared at kids. They're called Morning Watch, uh, and you can find those on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and those come out every weekday morning if you need a, a morning devotional to start uh, your day. Uh, we also can find all sorts of ways to be walking this way um, on our own right now and, and, and pulling uh, together in that. And so I encourage you to pull out a church directory and just call some folks this week or, uh, or write a few emails or send some letters. Uh, get on Facebook, maybe get in our Facebook group and try to uh, start some conversation there. Just think of ways uh, that we can be reaching out to one another in love and support and reminder in this time that uh, we're not uh, as alone as we might feel at times and that we are still thinking of each other, holding each other in our hearts and in our prayers, uh, even in the midst of these uh, these tricky times. Um, we'll have more information coming out uh, this week and in future weeks as we understand more and more what uh, the future of our worship looks like. Uh, so do stay tuned. If you've not been getting emails uh, from me or the church office, uh, please do let me know so I can make sure you get added to that list uh, so that you can stay up to date um, as things continue to change and develop. Uh, and now uh, let us have our blessing and our, uh, our sending hymn. May the blessing of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.